Hi, uh, I'm Annabelle Patrick, and today I'll be presenting two pieces of works with the same name, The Last Judgment. Our first version of The Last Judgment is by Hernonymous Bosch, and it was produced in 1482. It is an oil and wood triptych, and it's now kept at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, Austria. The triptych has both an exterior painting as well as an interior three panel piece. The triptych appears when closed to be painted completely in neutrals. Uh, it depicts St. James and St. Bravo donating to the poor. Two empty coat of arms are displayed at the bottom of these two panels. Upon opening the triptych, we no longer find these plain neutral colors. Instead, we begun we begin to be captured by these dark, rustic browns, vibrant greens, and blues Bosch uses in his panels. As you observe the panels, we begin to see a story told in each of them, all of which tell what has happened before, during, and after the final judgment by Christ. So our leftmost panel can be summarized as the creation of man and leaving Eden. We witness God seated in heaven amongst what we first assume are clouds at the top of, of this panel. Uh, a deeper look shows us that these are the rebel angels being cast out of heaven and transformed into insects. At the foot of this panel, we see Eve being created from Adam's rib and animals living in harmony around them. As we recede to the midground, we see this humanoid serpent tempt Adam and Eve with the forbidden fruit. Towards the center of this panel, we also see animals fighting to the left, marking the end of peace in the garden. Adam and Eve are also being chased from Eden into the dark forest by an angel with a sword. The center panel is truly where the title comes from. Here, Christ rests above in the clouds as the judge of the last judgment. His arms almost remind us of a scale of good and bad. Surrounding him is the Virgin Mary, John the Evangelicus, and the Apostles. Together, they all occupy a small portion of the bright blue heavenly sky. As we fall from heaven, we see the dams left behind. They're encompassed by dark browns as demons and imps begin to take the earthly plane and punish them. Devils begin to have their fun playing instruments while they also burn, hang, and impale, as well as eat sinners. The most right and final panel depicts hell. Now the deep browns encapsulate the entire panel with stark greens and reds as accents. In the center, we see Satan as he receives damned souls in his hut. Brimstone and fire flash in the air as demons continue their jobs of torturing, stabbing, and eating sinners. The painter of this piece was Hieronymus Bosch. He was a Flemish painter from the Netherlands. Born in 1450, Bosch was known as being stern and pessimistic. His works focused strongly on religion and the folly and sin of man. They are said to be a combination of his own imagination and the biblical stories that inspired him. He was also recognized as a highly imaginative creator of devils and a powerful inventor of seemingly nonsense, full of satirical and moralizing meaning. However, Bosch eventually died in 1516 and little was written about him while he was living. Our second depiction of The Last Judgment is different from the first in many ways. Also known as Il Gudarzio Universal, this fresco was painted by the great Michelangelo di Lodovico Bernardo Simoni. It took him seven years to complete the painting in 1541. This fresco stands about 45 by 39 feet in size and covers the complete altar wall of the Sistine Chapel in Vatican City, Rome. This fresco is painted as one image with separate tiers that we will examine. It presents a threat of hell alongside a promise of salvation. At the top of the image, we witness the second coming of Christ on Judgment Day. 
Christ displays his wounds from the cruci crucifixion as Virgin Mary, the saints, and others who face salvation surround him in heaven. Christ is beardless and is built physically similar to that of Hercules. Michelangelo takes advantage of the manner of style to emphasize Christ's physique this way. Included in the saints is Saint Bartholomew, who is considered a martyr for being skinned alive while carrying the gospel. He is seen holding his flayed skin. The face on the skin is generally recognized as a self-portrait of Michelangelo. In the middle of the image, we see to Christ's left the elects rising to heaven. Angels make attempts to help carry them above. To the right, the damned are either sent down or they fall. Angels fight the damned who try to rise and demons grab the sinners. As we continue down, we see the elect rise from their graves on the left towards heaven. To the most bottom right, we begin to see the fires of hell. Here certain men are already facing the punishment for their mortal sins. Near them, we see Charon of Greek and Roman mythology. Charon is a ferryman who crosses the river Styx to Hades. Here he carries damned souls to their ultimate fate. It poses the question of why did Michelangelo use a mythological creature in his Christian religious piece. Experts tend to say Michelangelo was inspired by Dante's Inferno, which describes Dante's journey through hell. Michelangelo di Lodovico Bernardo Simoni, known to most of us as just Michelangelo, was born in 1475 in the Republic of Florence. He was an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet of the Cinquecento period. His style is considered to be a part of the Mannerist period, but he considers himself more of a sculptor than a painter. Some of his sculptures include the Pieta of 1500 and David of 1504. Michelangelo was known as the archetype of a brooding and difficult artist. And although he was indeed hot-tempered, his character was much more complex than that of the sullen artist stereotype. He was also deeply religious. Both artists had outside influences on their pieces. Bosch painted during the High Renaissance of Northern Europe. For his piece, The Last Judgment, it has been speculated that Hippolyte de Berthos, the financial advisor of the court of Burgundy, was the patron, and the coat of arms on the piece used to have Berthos' coat of arms. However, it was painted over. This isn't widely accepted news yet, however. Bosch made this piece to inspire or scare others to live a virtuous life. Meanwhile, the history behind Michelangelo's Last Judgment is more well known. Patent in Cinquenzo, Italy, Michelangelo's patron was Pope Julius II. This patron had clear influence on the subject of the piece since it is inside the Sistine Chapel. The placement of the piece forces churchgoers to witness what may happen to them for their sins. While both paintings capture the essence of Judgment Day, they tell the narrative in slightly different ways. Bosch sets the story with the creation of man and allows the judgment to be the climax, clearly defining the turning point for humanity. He focuses on the darkness of hell, which seems to engulf earth. Michelangelo's piece, however, puts the viewer in the moment of the judgment, resting on the ground in limbo as others rise and fall. We await our judgment as the fires of hell begin to grow closer. Both depictions of the Last Judgment provide visual examples of what a sinner is, providing the appropriate punishment to fit the crime. In Bosch's work, beside the inn, in the center panel we see a plump man being held down. He is being force-fed from a barrel, which is in turn being fed with demon excrement coming from the barred window. 
we can assume this man is guilty of gluttony, and as punishment, he will be force-fed for the rest of eternity. Similar to this is the snake man in Michelangelo's piece. Near the fires of hell in the bottom right is a man with a snake wrapped around him. The head of the snake is biting his nether regions. This man's sin is that of lust. While both pieces do show similarities between sinners, the painter's description of Christ can be quite different. While Christ remains judge in both, Bosch keeps Christ small and humble. Michelangelo creates Christ in a very muscular and Greek god-like figure. Their depiction of demons is very interesting as well. Most of Michelangelo's demons remain mostly human and look very muscular. But Bosch's demons are terrifying creatures, some resembling fish or birds. Others look more fat and humanoid. Each artist retains his own style in their work. Bosch seemed to be in a league of his own in the high renaissance of northern Europe. His images are said to portray a visionary world of fantasy and intrigue, a painted world without close parallel until the advent of surrealism more than 400 years later. Michelangelo, meanwhile, maintained his mannerist style. He painted his subjects with a sculptor's eye, strongly focused on the shape of the human body. He is said to believe the body was the manifestation of the character of the soul. Viewing this in 1482, patrons and churchgoers would be terrified at the sight of demons devouring deviants and punishing them for their sins. Bosch hopes to convey to the viewer to join the virtuous path in life, one without sin. This is painfully obvious even today despite the radical style. Looking at it today, the piece almost feels as if it inspired surrealism. Looking at the style in Bosch's other works. The original meaning of the work is still evident even without the writings from Bosch's time. We were to view Michelangelo's piece in 1540 as one sat in church the figures going to hell would reside right behind the altar. As the preacher read from the Bible, those in the pulpits would be forced to think about the sins they've committed in the eyes of Christ, similar to Bosch's piece. However, Michelangelo does this on a much larger scale. Given the setting, the message is obvious. Looking today, the piece has remained intact, even though it is now censored. A tourist would be able to identify Christ and the Last Judgment. Both Bosch and Michelangelo managed to depict Christ and the Last Judgment effectively. While Bosch communicated the foolishness of man and his ultimate desires throughout his triptych, Michelangelo captures the moments at which we are meeting our Last Judgment. I chose these artworks because of how similar, yet radically different they are. Most interesting, I found the amount of detail Bosch produced in his art. It feels as if you're almost looking for a Where's Waldo.